in this video, we're going to focus on mental math techniques. So let's say if you want to add 34 plus 58 in your head, how would you do it? What's well, a quick and simple technique? So what I like to do is I like to break down the numbers into small numbers. 34 is basically 30 plus 4. 58 is 50 plus 8. Now, it's pretty much straightforward to add 30 and 50. You know that 3 plus 5 is 8, so 30 and 50 adds up to 80. And then 4 plus 8 is 12. 80 plus 12 is 92. And so that's a simple way to add two numbers. So let's try another example. Go ahead and add 69 and 45. So 69, we can write it as 60 plus 9. 45 is 40 plus 5. Now if we add 60 and 40, that's going to be 100. 9 plus 5 is 14. 100 plus 14 is 114. Now let's try some examples involving three digit numbers. Go ahead and add 176 and 258. So 176 is 100 plus 70 plus 6. 258 is 200 plus 50 plus 8. So first, let's begin by adding 100 and 200. So that's equal to 300. Now, if we add 70 and 50, how much is that? Well, we know that 7 plus 5 is 12. So 70 plus 50 is 120. And what about 6 plus 8? 6 plus 8 is just 14. Now, 120 plus 14, that's 134. And if we add 300 to 134, it's 434. And if you have a calculator with you, you can add 176 plus 258. You should get 434. And of course, it's always good to review the old techniques. You can always add it by hand. 6 plus 8 is 14. Carry over the 1. 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 5, that's 13. Carry over the other one. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. So you can confirm your answer uh, using that method as well. Here's another example. 549 plus 678. Feel free to pause the video and try that. So 549 is 500 plus 40 plus 9. 678 is 600 plus 70 plus 8. So what's 500 plus 600? Well, we know 5 plus 6 is 11. So 500 plus 600 is 1100 or 1100. Now what about 40 and 70? 4 plus 7 is 11. So 40 and 70 is 110. And then finally, we have 9 plus 8, which is 17. 110 plus 17 is 127. And if you add 127 to 100, that's 227. So 1100 plus 127 must be 1227. And so that's the final answer. Now let's try some examples involving subtraction. What is 75 minus 38? So we can use the same technique. We can break down 75 into 70 plus 5. And 38 is basically 30 and 8. But you need to apply the negative sign to both numbers, not just the 30. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So now, 70 minus 30, that's equal to 40. So we have 40 plus 5 minus 8. Now, 5 minus 8 is a negative number. That's going to be negative 3. And 40 minus 3 is 37. So 37 is your final answer. Now what about this? 143 minus 56. Go ahead and work on that example. So we can write this as 100 plus 40 plus 3. And 56, we can write that as 50 and 6, making both numbers negative. Now, 100 minus 50, 
There's many ways in which you could do this, but let's do 100 minus 50 because that's positive 50. And 3 minus 6, well, that's going to be negative 3. You can do this in many different orders. Um, so you just pick and choose whichever uh, order you feel comfortable in doing this. Now, 40 minus 3 is 37. And 80 plus 37, I mean 50 plus 37, is uh, 87. So that's going to be your answer for this example. And let's work on an example with three-digit numbers. Try that. So let's break down 356 into 300 plus 50 plus 6. And negative 189 is going to be minus 100 minus 80 minus 9. So let's start with 300 minus 100. 3 minus 1 is 2, so 300 minus 100 is 200. Next, we have 50 minus 80, which is negative 30, since 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And then we have 6 minus 9, which is negative 3. Now, 200 minus 30, that is equal to 170. And 170 minus 3, that's going to be 167. And so that should be the final answer. Now, you can confirm it by subtracting these numbers by hand. Now, 6 minus 9, we can't subtract it. It's a negative number. So we need to borrow a 1 from the 5. So that's going to turn into a 4. We're going to carry over a 1 to the 6, making it 16. 16 minus 9 is 7. Now, 4 minus 8 is a negative number, so we're going to have to borrow another 1, making this 2 and making the 4 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. 2 minus 1, 1. So we get 167. So you can confirm it using uh, that technique. Now let's work on simple multiplication problems. What is 5 times 4? So hopefully you've committed this to memory. You know your multiplication tables up to 12. But let's say if you don't know it, what is 5 times 4? 5 times 4 is basically 5 added 4 times. Multiplication, what it really is, is repeat addition. So 5 times 4 means you're adding 5 4 times. 5 plus 5 is 10. The other two 5s add up to 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. So 5 times 4 is 20. You could also see it this way. 5 times 4 and 4 times 5 are the same. 4 times 5 means that you're adding 4 5 times. 4 plus 4 is 8. The next two 4s add up to 8. And then we have one 4 remaining. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. So you get the same answer. So let's say if we want to find the value of 6 times 5, which is the same as 5 times 6. All we need to do is add 6 5 times, or add 5 6 times, whichever is easier. 6 plus 6 is 12, so these two add up to 12 as well. And 12 plus 12 is 24, plus 6, that's 30. So 6 times 5, or 5 times 6, is 30. Now what about 8 times 3? This is simply 8 plus 8 plus 8 3 times. 8 plus 8 is 16. And what's 16 plus 8? Well, 6 plus 8 is 14. So think of 16 as 10 plus 6 plus 8. And if 6 plus 8 is 14 and 10 plus 14 is 24, then 8 times 3 is 24. Now what about this example? Let's use two digit numbers instead. What's 20 times 13? Now sometimes it might be useful to think of math in terms of money. So imagine if you have 13 $20 bills. What is the value of 13 $20 bills? Well, you know the value of 520s is 100. Another set of 520s is another 100. So that's 10 20s you have. So you have three 20s left over. 3 20s is 60. So at this point, you've added 13 20s. 5 plus 5 plus 3 is 13. 
So if you add 100 plus 100 plus 60, you have 260. So 1320s equate to $260. Another way in which you can get that same answer is you can break down 13 into 10 plus 3 and then use the distributive property. 20 times 10 is 200 and 20 times 3 is 60. So 200 plus 60 gives you 260. So that's another way you can do it. Let's try another example. What is 25 times 7? So imagine if you have 7 quarters. What is the value of 7 quarters? 7 quarters is a buck 75. Therefore, 25 times 7 is 175. Now let's confirm it. 25, we could break it down into 20 plus 5. And now let's multiply it by 7. So what is 7 times 20? Well, we know 7 $20 bills is $140. And 7 times 2 is 14. If you add the 0, you're going to get 140. And then 7 times 5 is 35. So now, if we want to add 140 plus 35, you could break it down like this. 35 is 30 plus 5. 140 plus 30 is 170. And then add 5, you get 175. Now, what is 50 times 49? In this problem, you don't want to find the value of $49.50 bills. That's going to take some time to add that up. Instead, what we want to do is replace 49 with 50 minus 1 and then distribute. 50 times 50, how much is that? Well, we know 5 times 5 is 25. All we got to do is add the two zeros. So 50 times 50 is 2,500. And then 50 times negative 1, that's negative 50. So 2,500 minus 50 is 2,450. If you don't see this answer immediately, you could break down 2,500 into 2,400 plus 100. And you know 100 minus 50 is 50. So therefore, you're going to have 2,400 plus 50, which is equal to 2,450. So that's 50 times 49. So what about this one? What's 99 times 80? So based on the last example, you know that the best way to do this is to rewrite 99 as 100 minus 1, and then multiply it by 80. So 80 times 100. Well, 8 times 1 is 8, and then all we got to do is add the three zeros. So this is going to be 8,000. And then 80 times 1 is 80. So what is 8,000 minus 80? Well, first, 8,000 is 7,900 plus 100. And it's easy to do 100 minus 80. That's 20. And then add 20 to 7,900. So this is going to be 7,920. Now let's confirm this answer by using the old-fashioned multiplication technique. So 0 times 9 is 0. And that's also 0 if we multiply these two numbers. Next, we need to add a 0. 8 times 9 is 72, carry over the 7, and then this 8 times 9 is also 72 plus 7, that's 79. So when you add this, you get 7920. Let's try one more multiplication example. 76 times 54. So what I like to do is break down 76 into 70 plus 6, and 54 into 50 plus 4. Now we need to FOIL. We need to multiply 70 times 50. 7 times 5 is 35, and then add the two zeros. Next, let's multiply 70 times 4. 7 times 4 is 28, and then we just got to add one zero. And then we have 6 times 50. 6 times 5 is 30, and we got to add a zero, so 6 times 50 is 300. If you have six $50 bills, that's $300. And then finally, 6 times 4 is 24. Now we can add 300 and 280. That's going to be 580. And 24, you can think of it as 20 plus 4. Now 580 plus 20, that's going to be 600. And 3500 plus 600, 
Well, 35 plus 6 is 41, so this is going to be 4,100. And then plus 4, that's 4,104. So that's how you can do it mentally. But now let's confirm that answer by multiplying these two numbers. So 6 times 4 is 24, carry over the 2, and then 7 times 4 is 28 plus 2, that's 30. Now we need to add a 0. 5 times 6 is 30, so we're going to add a 3, and then 5 times 7 is 35 plus 3, that's 38. Now let's add 4 plus 0 is 4, and 0 plus 0 is 0, 3 plus 8 is 11, carry over the 1, 3 plus 1 is 4. So we get the same answer, 4,104. Now let's move on to division. So let's say if we want to divide 324 by 2. How can we do so mentally? So first, divide 32 by 2. That is equal to 16. And then divide 4 by 2. That's equal to 2. So it turns out that 324 divided by 2, if you type it in your calculator, you're going to get 162. So here's another example, 168 divided by 4. Notice that 16 and 8 are multiples of 4. So we can use that simple division trick. So first, let's divide 16 by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Next, let's divide 8 by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So this will give you 42. And it's always good to confirm your answer with a calculator, just to make sure um, you're doing it correctly. Try this one, 963 divided by 3. Now we really don't have to do 996 divided by 3, because 9, 6, and 3 individually are all multiples of 3. So first, let's divide 9 by 3. We can do it one at a time. 9 divided by 3 is 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So therefore, this is 321. Now, what if we don't have a nice number? For example, let's say 156 divided by 4. 15 is not divisible by 4, and 6 is not either. So what can we do in this example? In a situation like this, Break down 156 into smaller numbers, numbers that are divisible by 4. For example, 100 is divisible by 4, and 40 is divisible by 4, and 16 is divisible by 4. 40 plus 16 is 56, and 56 plus 100 is 156. So both sides of the equation are equivalent, they're balanced, they have the same value. Now how many times does 4 go into 100. You know 4 quarters is a dollar, so 100 divided by 4 is 25. 40 divided by 4 is 10. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now 25 plus 10 is 35. 35 plus 4 is 39. So therefore, 156 divided by 4 is 39. Now you can confirm it using long division. 4 goes into 15 3 times. 4 times 3 is 12. 15 minus 12 is 3. Bring down the 6. 4 goes into 36 9 times. And so the remainder is 0. So 156 divided by 4 is 39. Now let's work on some more practice examples. Let's divide 234 by 3. So now you don't want to use 200. 200 is not a multiple of 3. However, you can use 210 because 3 goes into 21, so 3 will go into 210. And you also could use 24 because 24 is a multiple of 3. So you want to break down 234 into 210 and 24. You want to break it down into two numbers that are both divisible by 3. Now, we know that 21 divided by 3 is 7, so 210 divided by 3 is 70, and 24 divided by 3 is 8, so this is equal to 78. Now let's confirm it using long division. 3 goes into 23 7 times. 3 times 7 is 21. 23 minus 21 is 2. Bring down the 4. 
3 times 8 is 24. So as you can see, this is equal to 78. Let's try another example. 84 divided by 7. So what two numbers should we break down 84 into? What I would choose is 70 and 14 because they're both divisible by 7. 70 divided by 7 is 10. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 10 plus 2 is 12. So 84 divided by 7 is 12. Now what about 145 divided by 5? So what we could do is break this down into 100 plus 40 plus 5 because each of these numbers are multiples of 5. 100 divided by 5 is 20 because it takes five $20 bills to make 100. 40 divided by 5 is 8. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So this is going to add up to 29. And this is going to be the final example. 168 divided by 6. So 60 is definitely a multiple of 6. So we can add another 60, so that's 120, so which means we have 48 left over. 60 plus 60 plus 48 adds up to 168. 60 divided by 6 is 10, and 48 divided by 6 is 8. 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 8 is 28. So therefore, 168 divided by 6 is 28. So those are some simple division tricks that you can use um, if you're dividing a big number by let's say, uh, a one-digit number.